So now in this video we're going to take another look at my TAC Life DM06 multimeter. I just got it a couple days ago and I've been busy this weekend, haven't done much with it, but uh, I figured I'd show you some of the features of this multimeter. So TAC Life DM06. In this video we're going to practice measuring capacitance and current with this meter. Now one thing to be aware of this meter only measures up to 600 milliamps, which is uh, quite a bit for basic electronics, the amount of current, but that's not a lot for a maximum amount of current for a multimeter to measure. So be aware of that if you're interested in this meter. Uh, you're not going to measure high currents, anything higher than 600 milliamps with this. So now, of course, to a measure capacitance and current, the red probe's going to go into this slot where we have the capacitor schematic symbol and the milliamp symbol there. And of course, you want to push this with some pressure, make sure it's almost uh, flush with the, the meter there. And then the black probe goes to COM. And that's uh, pretty typical that the black probe generally always goes to COM and again make sure that's flush if you saw my last video I talked about this but when I inserted these two uh, probe ends uh, plugs into the sockets there I didn't get them in all the way it felt like they won't go in any farther but I had to use some pressure to get them in all the way so be aware of that maybe you'll have that issue too hopefully they just plug right in easily for you so now to begin with, we'll measure uh, current. So I have the circuit open here. Remember when you measure current, you need an open circuit. You need to complete the circuit through the meter and we'll turn the, the meter on. And this is an automatic meter now. All we have to do is make the connections and the meter does the rest. So we're gonna connect to the cathode of the LED. You'll see the LED lights up. And here you can see we have about 13.6, 13.5 milliamps of current. And that's pretty accurate. This is a 220 ohm resistor. And so we should expect that. Now I'm going to swap out the resistor. And uh, this is a 10 kilo ohm resistor. And I, one of the reviews said that this meter did not measure low currents very well. But uh, we'll take a look at this now and looks like it's taking a lot longer to get a reading and we're not getting we're not getting a current measurement so I think the review said about five milliamps of current it stops uh, giving an accurate reading something like that and obviously we're not getting a very low current right now so that is a problem but that's just something to be aware of if you're okay with that uh, you know that's your choice so now again I swapped out the 10 kilo ohm resistor for this 4.7 kilo ohm 4700 ohm resistor and uh, we still have the meter set up exactly it was made no changes and now when we get a reading here now you can see it shows about 1 milliamp of current and it looks like it kinda struggles about in that range and I tested this with another multimeter and did the math and we should get about 0.7 milliamps of current and that's what I got with that meter about 0.7 milliamps of current and the math gave me about 0.7 milliamps of uh, current so looks like this meter only really does okay down to about 1 milliamp of current so now we're gonna come to these capacitors that you probably saw on the board and measure them Right now, both of these capacitors, both ends are connected to the negative rail here. There is power supplied to this rail too, but uh, since these are both on the same rail, that will just give the capacitor a path to discharge. So we're sure that this is discharged now, and uh, I'll, uh, now that we know that they're discharged, I'll move them both off of that rail there. But uh, in any case, now we'll take the meter and we're not going to change any settings or anything we're going to leave everything the way that it is and uh, these are polarized capacitors 
so we have to make sure we measure them in the right direction. This side needs to have the black probe because this side of the capacitor needs to stay more negative and the points on these probes are pretty short so I'm just going to kind of press down into the slot where the uh, lead goes in and then on this one too. Now this is a 470 microfarad capacitor. And there we go, it took a while, but finally we got a reading of 485 microfarad. And that's to be expected, that it would be off a, a bit. Capacitors don't have the exact value of their rating. So, even though you don't see the meter doing anything really, you got to kind of hold them there a while while it does its work. So this one shows pretty much spot on 470 microfarad. So... Since we got those readings, what I'm going to do is put these capacitors in a series. And that's one thing to be aware of when capacitors are in series, their capacitance goes down. When they're equal value capacitors, as uh, these are, even though one appears to be just slightly different, but uh, it should be about half of the capacitance, which you see there. Uh, 235 times 2 would be 470. So capacitance goes down when you put capacitors in series and the meter makes it really easy to see that. Now I'm going to put them parallel. I'm going to wire them into the same rows. There we go. They're both uh, wired into the two same rows. So now they're parallel. And when we take the measurement Now the meter will take a little while to think. The meter has to do quite a bit to measure uh, capacitance. And uh, it doesn't charge the capacitor all the way. And it has to do some math and stuff, so it takes a little while. But now you'll see that we're in the point .972, but that's in millifarad instead of microfarad. So this is the same as 972 microfarad. So about twice the capacitance as a single capacitor. When you put capacitors in parallel, their capacitances add up. And uh, so when there's two equal value in parallel, you have twice the capacitance. So now it may seem weird that you want to use uh, two capacitors in series for half of the capacitance. Right now these are in series. I have this capacitor on the positive rail there. The meter or the uh, power supply I mean is set to output 5 volts. And then the negative side comes here, where it connects to the positive side of this capacitor. And this capacitor, the negative side of the capacitor, since it's polarized, comes to the ground rail there. And uh, normally, generally you don't want to use a higher value capacitor, put it in series for a lower capacitance, if you can just use a lower capacitor. But uh, here I'm going to show you. Now I have the meter set to measure uh, voltages. It will also measure resistance and stuff, but uh, we're only going to look at voltages. And the meter is going to automatically do that. So now I'm going to turn the power on and take some measurements. So to begin with, we'll get the voltage across the two capacitors. And you can see that it's 5 volts across the two of them. And we could uh, measure directly at the meter or at the uh, power supply, I mean, as well there, too. Actually, I had them backwards, so we got a negative voltage. But uh, you can see the power supply is outputting about 5 volts, and we got about 5 volts across the two capacitors. So now, capacitors can only handle a certain amount of voltage. These particular ones, you can see nicely here, this is 470 microfarad, and also the voltage. So we can charge this capacitor up to 50 volts. And uh, so this is nowhere near 50 volts. We're perfectly safe. But what I'm going to show you now is, now that we got them in series, we'll measure this one capacitor. Now you see it's about half of the power supply voltage, about 2.5 volts, as is this capacitor. It's about 2.5 volts. And uh, so when you put them in series, the power supply voltage gets divided up among the capacitors 
it's easiest when they're equal value capacitors then each uh, capacitor in this case we got two of them so each capacitor is half of the power supply voltage so if we needed a 470 microfarad capacitor but the power supply was 100 volts then by putting them in series like this actually the capacitance would go down so if we needed a 235 microfarad capacitor but at 100 volts then we could put these two capacitors in series and each one of these capacitors would uh, take half of that voltage and in summary I took the uh, red probe out of there just to uh, show the meter without anything attached but I did have this schematic easily available that I did for a different video where you can see with two equal value series capacitors the power supply in this case 5 volts gets split up evenly between two equal value capacitors gets a lot trickier if they're not equal value but uh, for equal value since we got two then each capacitor gets one half of the power supply voltage and uh, I just demonstrated that with the meter but there's the schematic so uh, this is really the closing clip of the video but I just want to mention as I said there was problems with the current we can only measure up to 600 milliamps and when you get to low amount of milliamps somewhere near one milliamp it's it's not accurate at all uh, I saw that in a comment and I saw that by testing out the meter here but uh, I just want to say that uh, you generally don't measure capacitance and current much and so even though the meter is not great on current if you love everything else that the meter does it's probably not going to be an issue measuring currents tricky it's really easy on the breadboard all I have to do is move a wire and then we have an open where we can complete the circuit but uh, generally it's hard to measure current in, uh, in uh, real life circuits and stuff and so this may be all you need for measuring current you may decide you don't like measuring current and don't want to measure current at all and if you're one of those people then the limitations of current measurement with this meter uh, won't be a problem for you so that's just something when you're looking at multimeters you have to decide all the pluses and minuses of that meter compared to other meters and ultimately decide which one will work best for you